Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, there was uh, some community requests regarding the ability, um, regarding talking about how to create custom interactions or custom integrations inside of Halo and how to drive actions on tickets with that. Um, I personally am not necessarily a fan with a custom integration engine inside of Halo. It's a bit clunky to work with, very frustrating when you try doing anything complex with it. But there are situations where you can use it for simple things that make it really easy. And so in this video, I'm going to show you, number one, uh, a feature within the Halo called the spam feature, how to uh, treat tickets as spam. And then we're going to duplicate that button into a general ticket action and how we can use the custom integrations to drive it. Um, I've never done this before with a specific action, so you're going to learn it along with me to see, number one, what my process is to figure this stuff out. And number two, does it actually work? Um, without further ado, let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, here we go. This is my demo halo. Uh, one of my demo halos. <laughs> okay. So basically, uh, we're inside of a ticket right now. And up here, notice we've got a bunch of different actions we can do inside of the ticket. None of these actions is the ability to treat the ticket as spam. We do have the ability to extend into our hamburger menu up here, or ellipsis menu, whatever you want to call it, uh, and treat as spam right here. So notice it's got like the the deny not allowed circle, whatever. We've got the treat as spam wording. If I click on it, it prompts, are you sure you want to use, you wish to treat this ticket as spam? I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. Um, you know what, before I do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up uh, development tools. And I'm, I'm gonna dock this onto the side of the window so that you can see what it's doing here. Perfect. We're going to jump to the networking tab. Now, everything we talk about inside of Halo, when we talk about doing stuff, everything is being powered and driven by the API. So everything that we do, we're going to see a web request that happens. It's the same API that we ourselves can use when we're doing automations. And this is really where the power is going to come into play. I have this by like default set, that if I'm inside the network tab, it's filtered for the API requests. I'm always looking. I'm going to clear for right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and treat as spam. I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Now notice at this point, I see a post happening to a ticket endpoint. Ticket endpoint, I'm just going to expand this a little bit. Boom, we can see it's a post going on. We can see what endpoint it's going to, tickets. We can see the payload that's happening. Very straightforward payload. And we can see that in addition to that, it also throws a treated to spam button here. So let's see if we can recreate this feature. This is pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and just click this, copy this whole thing. It's going to the tickets endpoint. It's passing a post of an ID. The spam is true and refresh response is true. And we're going to try to recreate this. So I don't need to see it anymore. I'm just going to hide it for right now. And let's go ahead and jump into our configuration area. Let's go to open new tab. And we're going to go to advanced. Sorry, wrong window. We're going to go to integrations and down to custom integrations here. And we're going to go into custom integrations. We're actually going to skip integrations and methods. There are two things that we can do. We can either create an integration for Halo, and then from there, we can create methods that'll allow us to make that request that we're doing. But in this case, we're doing stuff that's native to the Halo's API. And one of the things that Halo did is they allowed you to do inside of a runbook to specify an action here under flowchart action, and then Halo API action. So we don't actually have to build an integration or method. We're just gonna say update ticket, which is gonna do a post to a ticket. And notice this is the payload it's passing. This is the payload that we need. So we've got the ticket ID already. We're just going to remove the status ID from nine to say, we're going to copy this actually. And we're just going to remove these two. And we can just fix the formatting a bit just by hitting enter here and here. And we're going to delete everything else after. And so what we're doing is we're just going to say update the ticket and this step, we can call it as treat as spam. And we're just going to save this. We're just going to move to step two when it's finished or step three when it's not. We can rename these if we want to and say success. You know, I don't know if it actually does anything uh, result success. And then we can come here and say failed. And we can say end where result is failed. We try from the start. That's up to whether or not we want to retry it or not. Let's go ahead and save this, but we need to have a name. Let's specify the name, treat as spam. 
and it's enabled. It can only be started from within Halo. It's not a webhook. No, we're not tying it to any events. We're just going to click Save. And then we're going to go through our configuration and go to Actions. And we're just going to build a new one. Treat a spam. Oh, other way around. But an icon, I don't know. Um, you got to find that one, whatever it's called. Uh, going through really fast, so I'm probably going to skip it or miss it or something like that. Um, what do you think that was called? It's not called block or deny. Uh, well, I mean, this is like kind of the pointless part, right? You can find an icon to use. I don't have to pick the same exact one. Um, it would be nice. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it quickly. I don't see it. All right, I'm just going to use the wheelchair. Boom, treat a spam wheelchair. We'll make that custom color. We'll do that black, right? We're not going to make it visible outside of workflows. If we have this button up there, we want to make sure it's being done only at the time when uh, when someone really wants to do it, like inside the workflow itself. And system use, we're going to go ahead and say execute, send webhook queue integration runbook, and then from here, we'll do treat a spam. And we're not going to make it a quick action. And we're just going to say no change for right now. I just want to see what happens when we do it. I'm going to leave the field list blank, but we could even include a note as to why it's spam or something like that, and we can make them put that note in. If I made it a quick action, I'm basically removing that are you sure you want to do this button. I'm inside the incident management workflow, so we want to add that button in here to see how it would look. So let's go to our configuration tickets, which is up here, and then workflows over here, and then incident management workflow up here. And we're just going to go ahead and add a button across the board to say treat as spam boom save and then we're going to go ahead and refresh this page okay so now that i have that i do have a wheelchair button here treat a spam i'm going to go ahead and press it it's going to prompt hey what are you, are you sure you really want to do this right similar to the prompt before if we turn that into a quick action it would be immediate we wouldn't have to do that and then we can go ahead and click save and then we can see the runbook was queued. And what should happen is it should be treated as spam at that point. Now, how do we actually know if this worked? Great question. We can see that their email address here is theresa.samuels at contoso.com. So we're going to go ahead and look at our email rules. When you do the treat as spam button, what it does is it creates a spam email rule here. Um, or it should, but I don't see any of them. Um, hold on. It's supposed to create a rule to ignore the email. I wonder if it's not doing it because... Uh, well, I did say we're going to find out if this is going to work. Hold on one second. Let's see. We have a mailbox set up. We do have a mailbox set up here. And it is working. So did they move the spam settings? Hmm. Let's go look at the run book and see if there's logs for it before we do anything else. Nope, here's a log. It says it failed. What was the request? <laughs> no permission to mark as spam. Um, so apparently the Halo API doesn't have rights to mark as spam. So we'll have to figure out what permissions it's using to make that work. Hmm. Let's go take a look at our uh, roles. Well, Let's go to integrations here. I doubt we're going to be able to tell or see, but it seems like the system itself doesn't have the rights to do it. 
probably using this, but we can't see what agent it's using. So we don't know what permissions it's using to be able to do that. System doesn't have rights to mark as spam. That's interesting. Well, our other option is to go ahead and create the API integration ourselves, tie it in. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's come here, we'll do APIs, we'll create an application, do this. We'll mark this as client easy secret. And we'll say that this is for right now, just Mendy. But we can create a bot account that should be able to do this. We're gonna copy the secret and grant it all permissions here. So let's see if this works. We're gonna, again, mostly for testing purposes, let's come to our configuration. Let's go to our custom integration. And we'll go to custom integrations. We'll create a new one, Halo PSA. System integration is none. Version we don't care about. Resource authorization, it will be client secret. Um, so here's our client secret we're gonna paste in here. It's OAuth 2.0. Authorization header name is gonna be authorization. We're gonna do client credentials with, as a beard with the prefix. Let's go ahead and look at our API documentation real quick. Uh, what we need to do is grab our resource server. That's going to be our base URL for the API. And then let's grab our auth authorization server, which is going to be our auth token here, for slash token. And I know this because the documentation will tell us. So for example, if I go here, we can see that the host name is here. The token is auth for slash token. Here are the information we need to spat, we need to pass through. And then of course the base API URL. Um which isn't specifically called out here, but it's called out over here, probably somewhere right here. Um, so I know more or less how to fill this in. We just need to grab the client ID and our scope is gonna be all. Client ID here will be the ID of the application that we created. So let's go here and go to Halo PSA application that we set up. And this is gonna be the client ID and we'll go ahead and paste it in there. And let's go ahead and save this. Okay. So now let's go to our methods. Our methods are going to be pretty basic. We're just going to update ticket. And that's going to be a post API for slash tickets, right? And if we're not sure, we can go back here and actually look at the original request. So this goes back to why I'm always in DevTools. Let me just expand this out a little bit. Our headers will tell us it's a post and we're going to for slash tickets to the for slash API. Um, so that's our URL for such tickets. We need to pass through a body of some kind and our body is gonna be JSON and it's gonna be that same thing that we pasted before, um, which is no longer here. Great. So let's go grab it from here, payload, copy all that and we're gonna paste it in. Uh, now the only difference, the only thing is that's actually an array. Let's go ahead and view the source. We wanna pass through as an array. So we're going to do that. And then the only thing we have to swap out is the ticket ID. So we're going to remove the ticket ID and we're going to include it from here like that. Let's go ahead and save this. Okay, now that we've did it as an actual method, we have the ability to test it independently of having it as a button. Let's go ahead and close this out. Let's go back to our service desk ticket that we were in 2187. And let's see what happens if I go ahead and flag we're going to come here, we're going to hit test and hit 2187 as the integer and save. And here we got a 201, which got a, is a successful response. We come here and we can see that we've treated it as spam. Ta -da. So it seems like the spam action specifically that I picked on is protected. Um, or may not be allowed to be used by everybody. Potentially it's a permissions or a role issue or something like that. I don't know exactly what role the system uses when you're using the built-in integration from the custom runbook, but you can build your own custom integration outside of that using your own API application that then ties to an agent and uses those agent permissions and the API permissions of that application you created. All we have to do to wrap this up is under custom integrations, we want to go back in there, update the runbook. Instead of using uh the action of a halo api action we'll just use execute execute integration method and that will be update ticket 
like that. Let's go ahead and save this. Well, let's go ahead and edit that because it looks like it modified the step it's going to. Move to success. If it's a successful response, move to failed. If it's a failed response and hit save. And then we can just delete these two. Don't need any more. Let's go ahead and save that. And then all we need to do now is go ahead and rerun this action to see what happens. We're going to treat a spam. We're going to save. We're going to say it's queued the run book. And then we should get a treat it as spam button right after that. So if we go to another brand new ticket, let's go to 2260. And we're just going to hit that wheelchair button. Uh, it's not on the same workflow. Hmm, let's move it. Incident management workflow. It's the wrong one. And then we should get our treat a spam button. Go ahead and press it. We'll save. And then it'll key the run book, which will then turn around and say, guess what? You have been treated as spam. Assuming that works. Boom. Treated as spam. Ticket is now closed. And that's it. That's how you do it. So again, the API is very powerful with Halo. The ability to just rip apart and reverse engineer what's going on using development tools in a browser makes it super easy to do automation on. And depending on the custom integration you're trying to do, if you're not trying to do anything too complicated like loops and if conditions and data manipulation, then the custom integration is perfectly usable. Uh, if you're trying to do anything that's a little bit more complex, it gets really annoying. And then of course, depending on when and how the fields, and if you're using custom fields, they may not be populated at the time when you're running that integration. And so you may have to retrieve those fields first, just makes it all the more complex. So I really don't like using it when it gets to more difficult situations, but for the quick and dirty um, custom actions that you can do. So for example, reclose is one of those buttons um, that are over here that you can easily turn into a system action. Uh, or turn into a button on a ticket here that you can then display at a right time point in time. Those kinds of things you can really do inside of the Halo integration using the custom integration actions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any suggestions or have any specific questions, feel free to comment below. Let me know if you want to see something specific. Thanks for watching.